So Paul says that there's going to come a time when people want or don't want to hear the truth. But preach the truth and preach the word of God anyway. Mm -hmm. We're in a war and there are many people who are literally losing their minds. They're losing their minds and their lives and their salvation. Because there has been they've been taken because they've been taken over by the wrong person. They've been losing their salvation because it's been taken by the wrong person. Because we have many people who are agents of Satan who are imposters or should I say impersonating officers generals, lieutenants, and majors, and leading many to their death, their grave, and hell. You have people that stand up and they want to be apostles and prophets, and you come to a revival and all they want to do is prophesy. You come to a church and all they want to do is prophesy. All they want to do is talk about certain issues, but they're not talking about salvation. They're not talking about what must I do to live, or what must I do to get rid of this thing that's mentally or physically attacking my body. Uh, you'll find yourself standing in the prayer line after prayer lines, and you'll find yourself sitting there, and you'll ask yourself then, if there's a God, why am I dealing with these issues? I stand in line, I pay my tithes, I gave my offering, I did all these things, but I'm wondering why God's not moving, and then you go home, and then you're still dealing with the same thing. And then you ask the pastor, you ask someone, and the thing is, they get religious and philosophize on you and tell you the reason that you're where you went because of your faith. The reason where you went because there's some sin in your life, but, but, but you still took my, my tithes and offerings, and you told me that giving my tithes and offerings will open up the windows of heaven, but you didn't tell me how to move or get into the windows of heaven, and if I get into the windows, of, or at least allow that heaven windows to open up, how do I get my healing? So because if God is opening up the windows of heaven, then I should be able to get something when God calls it to pour out. But we get brainwashed because we have all these imposters. Somebody might have a gift of, 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 of the, 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 the gift to prophesy, and now they want to be a prophet. They get called into the ministry, but now they want to be a pastor, and they all they were supposed to be is either an assistant or an evangelist. But we forget our place, and we don't know who we are. So in our ignorance, we poison and kill everybody around us. We listen to these people and we don't do the research and we don't know who we're reading and, and as we begin to buy books and we begin to listen to these people on the, on the radio and on the TV, we don't know that the spirit that's on them comes off on us. There's a guy, I think his name is C.S. Lewis, who wrote a Bible. And in this Bible is one of the Bibles that the satanic people use, but if you look at it by face value, it look exactly, and it's, and it's worded exactly like this. But it's what they use. He's the biggest Satanist, but people buy his material. There are other people who are, who are New Agers and, and, and have all these weird theologies and teachings, and, and, and we don't do the research on the author, but we buy the book because the book has that title, or it has something in there that, that, that speaks to our issue, because the man that's standing up in the pulpit is not speaking to our issue. So then you ask yourself, how do people get caught up in getting a coast? When we it look like and you look at it and you're like, wow, how can they get caught up in these occultic practices or these rituals? And reality is that we don't even know why we're Christians. We we just say we're Christians because why I say that if you don't have a personal walk well and a personal relationship with God, then you're only serving out of tradition and you're wondering why the enemy is coming in and attacking your house and doing this and you go to the blood of Jesus, you go in the name of Jesus and you're wondering why Jesus' name is not working and you realize that when you thought you were connected to God, you were actually connected to an occult. They have this occult that's, that, that's, that's getting a lot of black people, it's called Black Hebrew Israelite. They will not allow you to witness to them because they feel that they're the chosen ones and when you try to witness to them, they try to out talk you. It's a strong demonic spirit that's on it too. I tried to, I, I, I tried to understand how this guy that told me he was a preacher and then turned around and went into that clique. And then I tried to check it out and the more I tried to check it out, the more that demonic spirit that was on it began to attack my mind. 
And as it began to attack my mind, I tried to turn on 1390 or find something to listen to to get that stuff out of my mind. And I couldn't find anything on the radio to flush it out of my mind. So I had to go into warfare. I had to really start praying. I really had to go and, and really get into the presence. I had to really find out what was going on. And, and, and the thing is, we don't do our research on where we at. We don't do the research on these, on these different authors before we get the book. Everyone's X this, X that. And that's how we all came into the body of Christ being X. But the thing is, we got to find out if these things that these X are telling us are truths or are they agents or are they agents or are they uh, impersonators saying that they were hurt, they were wounded, they were good, but they gave their life to God. Or are they telling, or are they just coming in saying that they giving their life to God and beginning to spew our lives and then we begin to not do the research so we begin to regurgitate what they say and begin to poison other people. And indoctrinate other people into a witchcraft. Mm. We look at all these different churches and all of a sudden everybody wants to prophesy but no one wants to speak the truth. That's right. And back in the day when you look at from Genesis to Revelation when the prophet spoke or the man of God or the woman of God spoke, what took place was the simple fact that that everything they said came to pass. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, not months and months ahead, but it happened exactly the time and space that they said it's going to happen. Okay. So, as we begin to understand this thing, we begin to understand how the enemy works and how he begins to infiltrate these different churches, we got to ask ourselves, who's preaching to us? Because are they preaching or are they infecting us? Let's go to uh, Acts 8 and 1. Acts 8 and 1. Actually, we're going to go over to... Uh, we're going to go to Acts 8 and 9. And here in Acts 8 and 9, it talks about how Simon deceived so many different people. And how he brainwashed so many people. How Simon was able to make people think that he was a mighty man of God for the things that he said. See, because when we walk in the flesh, we find ourselves agreeing to the things of the flesh. We find ourselves minding the things of the flesh. We find ourselves getting deceived by the flesh. So look at this in, in uh, Acts 8 and 9. It says, there was a man, there was a certain man called Simon, which four times in the same city used sorcery and witchcraft, sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all, great, whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying, this man is a great power of God. And to him, they led, they had regards because that of long time had bewitched them with sorcery. Because they were so long, they, they saw him do these things so long to the point that they didn't realize it was sorcery. They thought it was a move of God. But then, but when they believed Simon, I'm sorry, when they believed Philip preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed. So, the witches were going around and they were pretending to be men of God. They were imposters going around saying they were men of God, but you see, People go God, but we don't know what God they're talking about. Mm -hmm. They have different religions that say Jesus or Yahshua would have much hate and much unlove, and, but yet they still say the name with no power. And they brainwash a lot of people. And you might begin to see, like you saw in, in the days of Moses, where he threw the stick down and the sorcerer blew the stick down. Everything that God was doing, the enemy was duplicating. Everything God was doing, the enemy was duplicating. Until God began to start doing things that they couldn't duplicate. To God allowed them to see that the enemy can duplicate anything, but then there are certain things he can't duplicate. But then it took a mighty man of God to come into that city. He began to preach the word of God, Jesus crucified, and salvation, and 
and the cross and the blood. He began to preach the word of God, the 